So there's no doubt about it, Amazon has changed a lot over the last couple of years. In some respects, there's a ton more opportunity, but on the flip side of that, there's a lot of challenges that have frankly made Amazon harder. So is Amazon FBA dead? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show both sides of the story. I'm gonna share one set of arguments that show that you should be very, very concerned selling on Amazon. I'm gonna show a flip side of that and some elements that should really excite you if you're in the Amazon FBA space. So why am I having this age old is Amazon dead conversation? I think for years there's been a clickbaity approach to addressing this question and it's really to draw clicks, attention, likes, all that stuff that, that gurus and YouTubers do. My intention with this video is not that. I've actually been thinking a lot about this last couple months. Uh, spawned originally by somebody who I really, really respect in the space, Miles Dumphy, the nomad millionaire, who recently exited his Amazon business for eight figures and really had a philosophical, intellectual video addressing this topic. And he was much more on the Amazon being dead end of the spectrum, especially for new sellers. More recently, another figure in the space, Ryan Daniel Moran, who's actually uh, one of the videos that he made like five years ago on zero to a million on Amazon is what actually introduced me to the space. Um, had a really, again, thoughtful, intellectually curious video that addressed some of the challenges ahead for Amazon sellers. So what do I think? Well, let's unravel this a little bit. First, I think it's important to understand that there's eras of Amazon and there's been eras of sellers that have been successful on Amazon. I recently interviewed Spencer Jan, who recently had um, multiple nine-figure exits with his brand Solo Stove. He actually started on Amazon in 2009. And back in that original era, it was literally, did you have the balls? Uh, or for my female viewership, for some non-phallic example, did you have the chutzpah? to really just go after it. Um, there was information asymmetry, there was no information out there. There wasn't any ideas on sourcing. Alibaba was very basic at that time. How do you ship stuff 10,000 miles across the water? How does it all work? I mean, there was so many unknowns that the early adopters um, that just you know took advantage of that information asymmetry were the ones that were successful. Another early era, I would say, call it you know the 2014-ish era up to probably 2017. Again, there was data available, there was courses, some YouTube stuff out there, but there wasn't a ton of information, and you had to be almost a purebred entrepreneur. So the eBay sellers, the people that just went after it, were the ones that were rewarded at that time. Um, but it was also the Wild West, right? You had folks that could attack your account, you could buy reviews. Um, it wasn't as structured in the same way that it is today. The next era, and I would say the most recent era, has been a step up in professionalism. So there's a lot more information, there's a lot more knowledge out there, and still massive amounts of opportunity uh, that a lot of us out of this era have found a lot of success and become millionaires in the process. But with all the opportunity that's happened, this next era is what I would call the professional era of Amazon. And with those changes, there's definitely some concerning ripples in the water that people need to be aware of. So on the one side of the coin, is Amazon FBA dead? Well, let's argue that it may be dead. And some of the reasons for that, I think the biggest one is operational complexity. Or said another way, you've gotta have a lot more skills and a lot more structure and sophistication in your operation to effectively compete. Not too long ago, you could order from China. It doesn't even need to be really that advanced or differentiated of a product, frankly. You could ship it directly into Amazon warehouses, never touch it, see it, worry about it and it was off to the races, you could send as much as you wanted to, and you would really only be penalized if you didn't sell through your product in six months. Well now, you've gotta be much more sophisticated on the supplier side. There's now tariffs that have been instituted uh, that can be really punitive for certain categories. Obviously, the cost of freight has gone from, call it 3,500 bucks a container, upwards in the mid 20,000s of late, and it's probably never gonna get back below 10,000, so it costs more to ship stuff. There's delays. You now need a 3PL infrastructure in place. You need to understand how to ship via UPS and or LTL palletized shipments in the US. Instead of going to one Amazon distribution center, oftentimes you have to go to two or three, especially for larger products. So there's a lot of moving parts that you need to be able to understand and bring to the table. And that complexity erodes margin at each step of the way. And it takes somebody who is new, learning a lot of things about Amazon, and instead of just one thing to learn, it's another three, four, five things that they need to learn and juggle. So operational complexity uh, makes it very, very difficult for new inexperienced sellers or new inexperienced business people to navigate. The second is, is that ad costs have gone up. And not only have they gone up, the requirement to have ads as part of your strategy 
and proportion of your costs that go into marketing your brand on Amazon has increased and increased a lot. Amazon's ad revenue alone has exceeded the ad revenue globally for all newspapers. Think about that for a second. Every single ad across the world for newspapers, Amazon ads, primarily on amazon.com, have exceeded that revenue level. Not only that, Amazon has continued to increase the available ad real estate and their corresponding ad revenues have gone up significantly as a result. So I think it's very conceivable that the ad cost as a proportion of your total revenue is now plus 5%. So if it used to be say eight to 10% of your ad spend, now it's 15% plus. They've got a pay to play now and there's no way around that and that hurts margins. Then we've got the notorious Amazon aggregators or these large enterprise level financial powerhouses that have accumulated massive amounts of money to go out and acquire brands and ultimately run and scale those brands once they've acquired them. As of the shooting of this video, north of 12 billion with a B dollars have been injected into the space. So conceivably, you've got all these really big sophisticated operations with economies of scale and whack loads of money to invest into the space. So as they become more prevalent, the likelihood that your SKUs and brands are gonna compete against these big aggregators goes up and you're facing a really formidable competitor. And not only that, but I would say that it's highly likely that most of the folks that are running these aggregators are smarter than the average Amazon seller, at least more sophisticated from a business standpoint. And not only are they potentially smarter, but they're actually able to be dumber with their money, meaning that they've got more money to burn, they've got more money to experiment, they've got more money to make experiments, and they can maybe run up ad costs, run costs that you maybe can't as an individual seller stomach because of your working capital and cash flows. I think equally or more scary, there's also the adoption of big brands on the Amazon platform. One thing that COVID did is dramatically reshape the channels with which physical products are bought and distributed. So if you're traditionally primarily in brick and mortar retail, obviously that has gone down significantly here over the last couple of years. And even as it's recovered, the buying habits and behaviors of customers have moved online. So in order to chase that growth and cover the losses that have happened from physical brick and mortar retailers, a lot of these big brands have now entered the Amazon platform. And while that in and of itself isn't super scary because oftentimes they're priced out of being really price competitive on Amazon because they've got multiple um, layers to feed in terms of their channel distribution. But what is scary is, is there's a lot of dumb money there. You've got a lot of agencies running their ads for them. And that's a significant reason why the ad costs have gone up significantly as these big brands have flooded into the space and probably spent money inefficiently that's disrupted the market. And they're obviously usually premium offerings as well, so they tend to have more margins, which means they can spend more on ads to acquire customers. The next signal that Amazon FBA may in fact be dead is just the startup costs. I think historically you could have gotten away with $5,000 to start a brand. Uh, I've always recommended having at least 10,000. I think that number has gone up. And unless you're targeting niche opportunities or some niche geographies, I think it's highly conceivable that the entry point is somewhere in that 15 to $30,000 mark now. And if you wanna really swing for the fences for six figure plus per month opportunities, you're looking at a six figure plus commitment in capital. That changes the kind of opportunities that sellers can go after and it changes the kind of sellers that can actually make a run financially at this business model. Next is rule changes. All of the tricks, the shenanigans, the rebates, all these things that sellers have used a lot here over the last couple of years, uh, Amazon's cracked down on them and cracked down on them significantly. So it's much more difficult with the old playbook to rank organically on Amazon. And obviously ranking organically on Amazon is the name of the game to get into that Amazon flywheel and that's really the benefit of this business model. So it's become much more difficult, much more sophisticated to actually rank successfully a product on Amazon. So those are the arguments against Amazon FBA being a viable opportunity for most people moving forward. And maybe I scared the shit out of you and I bummed you out. Well, let's counter that. And here's some counterpoints to why Amazon FBA isn't dead and some considerations for that perspective. First of all is the total addressable market size or the TAM of e-commerce in general. COVID and the corresponding behavior shifts that have happened with consumers has forever and dramatically changed and increased the landscape for e-commerce across the world and through all of the markets that Amazon sellers participate in. If you just take a look at this chart here through to 2021, it shows how much e-commerce has increased and how much other channels have actually gone down. 
Said another way, e-commerce is eating physical brick and mortar retails launch. And there's been a massive growth of e-commerce opportunity throughout the world. Furthermore, Amazon has taken a significant chunk of that e-commerce growth pie, especially in markets with which they operate in. And of that growth within Amazon, the 3P marketplace sellers or the individuals that get into the Amazon FBA opportunity have continued to grow and eat a bigger chunk of even Amazon slice of the pie. So e-commerce has gone up, Amazon's gone up, and the 3P seller proportion of Amazon's growth has gone up as well. Furthermore, the total market share that smaller brands are absorbing as part of that growth is significantly increased over every other category. So not only are people shopping more online, shopping more on Amazon, buying more from 3P sellers on Amazon, it's the smaller brands and the smaller sellers that are grabbing more of that market share than any other type of brand. So the small, nimble, agile entrepreneurs participating in this marketplace as physical product brands are eating the lunch of these bigger players. Next, let's talk about these scary aggregators. Look, I have a ton of respect for them. I sold to an aggregator D1 brands. I've actually invested in D1 brands. I believe that the aggregation space is one that's gonna to continue to be a really exciting growth category of e-commerce in the years ahead. But after engaging with a lot of aggregators and seeing how a lot of them are operating these brands, I can tell you I do not lose sleep over competing against Amazon aggregators. They're big, they have lots of working capital, they can scale their teams, get economies of scale, but a couple things that they don't have is one, they've got an ownership problem. And what I mean by that is individual e-commerce sellers and entrepreneurs live, breathe, and care about their brands and products and the success of those brands and products more than any employee any day of the week. And that's simply because they have to care differently. It's their own skin in the game, it's their own money. So no matter how much salary you're making, bonus, equity you have as an employee of these aggregators, I don't think that they're gonna care as much as the individual entrepreneurs and run those businesses with as much foresight as those individual entrepreneurs. So I would actually bet on an entrepreneur dunking on an aggregator any day of the week. Does that mean that they're not gonna get better? No. Does that mean that they're not smart? No. But I think you should be a lot less scared of aggregators as the big bad wolf than people really think. And furthermore, there's literally millions of SKUs on the platform. And the likelihood of you actually going head to head against an aggregator despite their growth is actually pretty small. Similarly, these big brands entering the space I think are also gonna be weak when it comes to competing effectively on the platform. There's this same ownership bias where they're the people running an e-commerce or Amazon channel for a big brand simply aren't gonna care the same that an entrepreneur is. I come from this world and it's a world of strategy by PowerPoint and it's deferring to agencies that run their ads and run the channel. And I think there's so much inefficiency and ineffectiveness with those strategies. Next, I would say that if you think competing on Amazon is difficult, and profitability is a challenge on Amazon, try some other channels. If you ever look at anybody that's been on D2C selling Shopify as an example, the new Facebook algorithm has actually destroyed a ton of businesses. We talked about the decline of brick and mortar retail. Well, that's still an opportunity. It's still tremendously difficult to find profitability and access to brick and mortar channels. If you think it's hard logistically to ship stuff, to an intermediary and then to Amazon. Imagine managing fulfillment across the US on your own with all those complexities and cost increases. So if you think the grass is greener and you think Amazon's margins suck, I think you might be surprised if you were to venture out how hard it is to compete and maybe Amazon's not as hard as you think. Another big benefit I believe is the anti-flywheel effect of legacy products on the platform. It used to be that if you had five, 10,000 plus reviews, you couldn't change your images, you didn't really need to have a better offer. You could just ride that success from 2016 and continue to make that happen. What we're seeing is these legacy ASINs and SKUs getting significantly disrupted, which means that Amazon is prioritizing new entrants, new SKUs, and new compelling offers. So markets that were previously really difficult to disrupt are becoming easier with the right product, brand, and offer. And then finally, I would say that there's been a significant decline in foreign competition, primarily from China. The crackdown on reviews suspended tens of thousands of Chinese accounts. The removal of rebates and search find buy as a viable strategy has dramatically changed the launch playbook. And I think if you're a Western seller, 
with a compelling premium offer and differentiated product, and you match that with skills and knowledge of the Amazon platform, I think you have a massive, massive leg up on competition now that you never had before. So that's it. Take whatever argument that you think is the most compelling, look at your own personal situation, and determine if Amazon FBA is right for you. There's no doubt it's harder. There's no doubt that there's margin compression. There's bigger, badder wolves entering the space every single day. And it's probably as complex as it ever has and probably as hard for a new or small seller than it's ever been. But on the flip side of that, the pie continues to get bigger. Amazon's splice of that pie continues to get bigger. Smaller sellers and 3P Amazon sellers continue to eat more of that pie every single day. And if you've got that entrepreneurial grit, that knowledge of the Amazon platform, I think it's actually the big aggregators and the big brands that should be scared of us little guys. So that's it guys. Again, I've seen a ton of negativity. I've seen a ton of stuff in the space and I think it's warranted to look in the mirror and realize, hey, do I have the resources, the skills, the talents, and the stomach to participate in the Amazon space? And for many here over the last year and over the next year, the answer to that may be no. But also realize that the brain is always going to reject change. The brain is scared of change. And so as these dynamics shift, some of them good, some of them bad, it's the folks that are mentally on the game that I think are gonna win. You know, I'm reminded of a really awesome quote from Susan David. She says, discomfort is the price of a meaningful life. So I always wanna remember that. You know, there's times where I question myself. Do I have what it takes? Can I make a good run in Amazon still? I think we all have that fear. Uh, and we go through moments of that. But that cliche saying, if it was easy, everybody would do it, has never been more true. On the flip side of that, those that are able to bite down on the mouth guard, think thoughtfully about their customers, build really cool products and offers, sell at a premium, I think are going to cut the knees out from other competitors in the space and win a massive amount of the market. And also remember why you're doing this. I mean, I got into Amazon, I think a lot of other people did, because they wanted freedom in their life. They didn't want to drive to work every day. They didn't want bullshit nine to five politics. They realized that the game of modern corporate life wasn't for them. And as Nietzsche said, he who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. So if you have a really strong why, you're going to figure out the how. You're going to be able to roll with the punches. You're going to figure out how to manage adversity. You're going to be able to take the pros and the cons of any platform or opportunity as they come. And I'll just close by saying that like industries or sales channels aren't successful. People are. It was people that were successful selling on Amazon in 2009 when things were completely different. It was people that were successful in 2018 on Amazon when it was completely different. And guess what? It's going to be people that are gonna be successful on Amazon in 2022 and beyond. So I frankly don't really give a shit about what people are saying in Facebook groups, what doom and gloom articles are saying, what aggregators are doing, what big brands are doing. I'm aware of the information, I'm aware of the facts, I'm aware of the data, but I don't give a shit, because you know what? It's me that's gonna be successful or not. It's you that's gonna be successful or not. It's people that are going to be successful or not on Amazon or any platform and in any business. Winners act. Winners don't wait to be acted upon. So be proactive. Assess your skills, deficiencies, and the information in front of you. Take that back as we lead into next year. Bite down on the mouth guard. Build kick-ass businesses. Build kick-ass products and offers. Have fun and get after it whether that's on Amazon or whatever other opportunity makes the most sense for you and your family. Either way, let's go.